All right, welcome back. Here we are, last section of the first unit. We're going to be talking about the zeros of polynomials, and zero is like the best mathematical number ever. It's so powerful. The best reason that we have for zero, you multiply any number by zero and it equals zero. A billion times zero? I mean, those are super easy. I always got those right back in elementary school. So should you. All right, let's talk about the zero. Let's solve these real quick. So 4 times a equals 0. Um, so here's the thing. For this equals 0, I divide by 4. 0 divided by 4 is 0. So a would have to equal 0. Let's try this one. a times 6 equals 0. Again, I divide by 6. 0 divided by 6 is 0. Anytime we have these situations where I have two or more things that are multiplying, whenever I multiply and it equals 0, whenever the product is 0, it has to be 0. I don't know what that is. It's got to be 0. It's the only way I could get there. I have two things. I'm multiplying. The answer is zero. That means one of these two things has to be zero. I know that's not zero. So A has to be zero. All right, and this is, I mean, I know that seems so stupid, honestly, but it's very important and it's something a lot of kids just don't think about. And what it is, it's actually called the zero product property. All right, the zero product property says, in a nutshell, when I have two numbers that I'm multiplying, if the product is zero, then one of those two things has to be zero. Either A has to be zero or B has to be zero. We may not know, so we may have to find out. All right? So we can always set these things equal to zero and solve them. I have two binomials, and they're equal to zero. I don't know which one is zero, but I can set them both equal to zero because of the zero product property. And I could subtract 1 on this side, x equals negative 1. I could add 1, 2x equals 1, divide by 2, x equals 1 half. Okay? That is the zero product property. It allows us to solve equations where the degree might be higher than just 1. All right? It's very powerful. Why is it so powerful? Well, now we can solve these quadratics that we've been dealing with. All right, so we have a polynomial right here. We have a quadratic. We have a squared. We have 12x. We have 9. The first thing we got to do is get everything on one side, and it's got to equal 0. To find the 0, to find the solution, all right, we have to find this by solving it. All right, so here we go. So I'm going to get them all on one side. Now, the easiest thing would be to subtract 5x squared, right? Well, that gives me a negative over here. That gives me a negative, and it's never easy to factor when my highest, my leading coefficient is negative, all right? So I don't like doing that. So I'm going to move everything else to the other side so that my highest degree, my highest exponent is a positive number, all right? So here we go. So that means I added 12x to this side. I subtracted 9 to get them to the other side. Hopefully you already know how to do that. So what do I have now? I have 5x squared plus 12x minus 9 equals 0. All right, so if I'm going to factor, I know I need two numbers and multiply to negative 45 and add to 12. So I have a leading coefficient that's not 1. I really need to do the box for that. All right, let's see. First term goes in the first box, 5x squared. Last term in the last box. All right, what are two numbers that multiply to negative 45 and add to 12? Well, 15 times negative 3 multiplies to negative 45 and adds to positive 12. When I go this way, I can take out a negative 3. Remember, it's negative because the box closest is negative. Between 5x squared and 15x, I can take a 5x out. Going up, I can only take an x out. Going up here, I can take a 3 out. So now I have, I've changed my original to x plus 3 times 5x minus 3 equals 0. All right? I've taken this original, changed it so that everything was on the same side, and I factored it. So now I have two things, and it equals 0. To a product of two things equals 0. I'm going to use the 0 product property. So x plus 3 could equal 0. 5x minus 3 could equal 0. So here I subtract 3. Guys, I, I need you to understand that when I show the solutions, I'm not going to put minus 3 on this side. My, I'm not going to do that. All right, Our math should be a little bit higher than that right now. I shouldn't have to show that step. 
Here, I add 3, so I have 5x equals 3. I divide by 5, so x equals 3 over 5. So I have two possible answers that could make this equation true. They find my zeros. And we'll talk about this in unit 2, but why are they called zeros? They're called zeros because it's where they cross the x-axis. So when y is 0, all right? Big, big stuff here. All right. Let's take a look over here at number three. So again, I want to have my highest degree positive, so I want to keep this here. It's already positive. So that means I'm going to subtract 32n, and I need to add 12 to the other side. So we should keep these in order. Highest exponent, next highest exponent, and so forth. All right, uh, four, uh, look, I already got four things, so I, I don't have to worry about multiplying and adding. I already got four things. I got four boxes. 8n to the third, negative 3n squared, negative 32n, and 12. So you go in this way, I can take a negative 4 out. Here, I can only take an n squared out. Going up, I can take an 8n, and here, it looks like I can take a negative 3. So my first factor is 8n minus 3. My next factor is n squared minus 4 equals 0. What do you notice here, though? Well, I always am looking out for perfect squares. So I have difference of squares here, so I can factor that again. 8n minus 3, and that's n minus 2, and n plus 2 equals 0. So 8n minus 3 could equal 0. Once I have all my factors equal to 0, I'm going to set each individual factor equal to 0. So I add 3, so 8n equals 3. Divide by 8, 3 eighths. All right? So that's one answer. I don't really need to do this, do I? n minus 2 could equal 0, so I add 2, so n could be 2. Here I subtract 2, so it could also be negative 2. So I have three answers on this one, three full answers on that one. All right? All right, let's take a look. This looks really hard. I have v squared minus 17v plus 72 times v squared, 4v squared minus 9 equals 0. Now, looks hard. Not really. Take a look at this. Let's break this up. I have two factors here. So I, I'm just going to factor this first thing here and then factor this one over here. In fact, this one looks super easy because it's difference of squares, right? So I'm going to do that one right now. So the square root of the first is 2v. The square root of the last is 3 One's plus, one's minus. That was super easy. All right. Over here, two numbers that multiply to 72 and add to negative 17. There's a leading coefficient of 1, so we don't need to do the box. Can you? Yes, you can, but it would really be good if you got to the habit of not doing it when you don't need it because it's so much faster. The two numbers that multiply to 72 and add to negative 17 are negative 8 and negative 9. So now, we just have four things that multiply to zero. So we have to set them all equal to zero. So v minus 8 could equal zero. So v would be 8. v minus 9 could equal zero. So v could be 9. 2v minus 3 could equal zero. So I could have 2v equals 3. Divide by 2. v could be 3 halves. 2v plus 3 could equal zero. Subtract 3. Divide by 2. And... There we go. We have four possible solutions or four possible zeros of this graph. It's a lot. <clears throat> all right, let's, let's turn this back to what we did last time, all right? Last time we knew that um, if we had a factor, we had a possible answer, we could divide it out and then we could factor what was left. So we're going to do that, but we're actually going to find all the solutions now. So I know this is a solution, so I'm going to divide that in. Now, before we would say, I know this is a factor, and I set it equal to 0, and I found out that it was negative 2, right? I don't need to set change this to a positive 2. It's already telling me x is negative 2. That's what I'm dividing by. What are my leading coefficients? 4, 17, 9, negative 18. I'm taking this polynomial, I'm dividing out what I already know is one of the factors. Once I have all the factors, then I can solve it. 
So I add straight down, multiply up, add straight down, multiply up, add straight down, multiply up, add straight down. So now I have 4x squared plus 9x minus 9 equals 0. So we can factor that. We need two numbers that multiply to negative 36 and add to 9. Let's make our box because I have a leading coefficient that's not 1. All right, so first term, first box, last term, last box, and let's see, I would say 12 times negative 3 multiplies to negative 36 and adds to 9. So when I go this way, I can take a negative 3 out. Here I can take a 4x out. Going up, I can take an x out, and I can take a 3 out. All right, so I have x plus 3. I have 4x minus 3. They could equal 0 because I'm solving them. So what's this one? Easy peasy. Subtract 3. x is negative 3. Over here, set it equal to 0. Add 3. 4x equals 3. Divide by 4. x equals 3 fourths. So I have two solutions, but it wants all the solutions. Well, I have a, my very first solution was also x equals negative 2. Should I include that? When it says for all my solutions, should I include that? Of course you should include that, all right? So make sure you include that even though it's something we all forget. All right, oh man, this is another one. This looks so tough. But what I like to do is look at it, analyze it. Could I make it easier? Yes, I can. First thing I notice here is that this 2n minus 3 is the same here and here. So yeah, I could multiply all this out and solve it that way, but I notice that it's the same thing over there, so I'm just going to I'm going to do substitution. I'm going to say 2n minus 3, I'm going to call that x. So wherever I see 2n minus 3 in that box, I'm going to put an x. So that's x squared minus 80 equals 2x. Now we have a problem that's not really that hard. So I'm going to subtract 2x because when I solve these, I want to set it equal to 0. All right. Once it's equal to 0, then I can factor. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 80 and add to negative 2. That's negative 10 and uh, positive 8. All right. So then I can solve this. So I add 10. So x would equal 10 or x would equal negative 8. Now I just have to look. Was I solving for x originally? No. In fact, so I have to go back and substitute it in. So what was x here? 10. So 2n minus 3 equals 10. Add 3. Divide by 2. Now, if you want to make that a decimal, I don't care. All right, right here, same thing. x is 2n minus 3. All right? It equals negative 8. So I'm going to add 3. That's negative 5. Divide by 2, negative 5 halves. Easy peasy, man. Easy peasy. All right. I want you to try and solve these two by yourself and see how you do. Make sure you please pause the video, though. All right, here we are back again. So let's go over this. I subtracted these terms. I combined 2x's and negative 6x's to get negative 4x's. Factored. All right, I noticed here that 4x squared minus 1 was a difference of squares. Set them equal to 0, so I added 1, divide by 2, subtract 1, divide by 2, add 7, divide by 4. All right. Over here, I had this blob, and I called that x. So x squared plus 2x equals 24. I subtract 24 so I could set it equal to 0 because once I set it equal to 0, I can factor and set my factors equal to 0. That's a zero product property we learned about today. All right, so those two numbers were 6 and negative 4. So I got x equals negative 6 and I got x equals 4, but I remembered I'm not solving for x, so I'm solving for p. So what did I say? x was p minus 4. So p minus 4 equals negative 6. Add 4 to that and I get negative 2. And p minus 4 equals 4. Add 4 to that and you get 8. So our two answers are negative 2 and 8. I know that's a lot, um, but really the only thing you really learned, maybe this 
this is a trick. I understand that. But remember that you have to set your factors equal to zero and solve. That's the biggest thing I want you to take out of this today. All right. Best of luck on this. Wrap this unit up. Again, take advantage of those who know what they're doing. Ask your teachers for help. Ask your friends for help. Ask that shy kid across the, the way that knows how to do math really well but just may, may be quiet. Ask them for help. All right. There's a lot of experts out there, and you can get a lot of information. Don't just sit there. Be active. This is your education. This is your future. Take control of it. All right, till I see you next time and a few units away, uh, be good, guys. See you later.